Having live bait is sometimes crucial for having a good day out in the water. So what I'm gonna do is in this video, I'm gonna show you the three different techniques you can use to cut out the bait shop entirely and catch your own live bait. If you don't know already, my name is Brent Shermer and welcome to the series I like to call Just the Tips, where I like to give you my strategies to catch different species of fish around here in Florida. This episode is going to be a little bit different than the other ones I've posted in the series, but I think this is a very important topic to cover if you want to make yourself a more well-rounded fisherman. Also, the winner for the Shimano combo that was in my last video will be announced at the very end of this video. I just want to say thank you to everyone that participated in this and thank you again to Steven Champ for providing that combo for everyone. All right, so when it comes to fishing, especially around here in Tampa Bay, live bait is often crucial for catching fish. Some days they just don't want to bite artificial or whatever and you got to be able to get your own bait. The four major bait fish that are around here are greenbacks, threadfins, pinfish and grunts. You can buy pinfish and grunts from most bait stores around here, but they're often super overpriced for how easy it is to really catch them. And you can't buy greenbacks or thread fins anywhere. So if you want them, you gotta be able to catch them on your own. To start this off, I'm gonna begin with the cheapest and easiest way to catch your own bait that anyone with a rod and reel can use it. And that is a sabiki rig. Sabiki rigs are just pre-made rigs that have six hooks on them and have a small piece of material on each hook that's supposed to mimic a small bait fish. To use a sabiki, all you have to do is tie your line to the top swivel, undo the rig from its packaging, and then get an appropriate size weight and attach it to the snap swivel at the bottom of the rig. So if you're looking to catch either greenbacks or thread fins with the sabiki, all you have to do is just cast it out to the school and slightly jig it while you're slowly reeling it back. The little bit of material that's on the sabiki itself will be enough to get a bite from these fish. If you're looking to catch pinfish or grunts with the sabiki, I recommend tipping the sabiki with a small piece of either shrimp or squid. Squid will stay on the hook a little bit better, but either one will work. The same strategy applies here. All you have to do is just kind of cast it out onto the grass flat. This is where mostly the pinfish and grunts are going to be and just lightly jig it and they'll smell that little piece of bait that you got on there and you can get multiple fish on at one time. I recommend that when you're using a sabiki, that when you're reeling it back and you feel some fish on your rig, that you don't reel it back quickly. You do it nice and slow and see if you can get multiple fish hooked up at once. Of the three different methods I'm talking about today, sabikis are definitely the easiest. They only cost you like a buck or two. You can fish them from shore, you can fish them from a boat, they only take like a minute to set up on your reel and it's a pretty effective way to catch some bait. However, if you've ever used a sabiki before, you know how annoying they can be. They always seem to get tangled up and it seems that they always hook into everyone and everything that's in like a 10 foot radius of them. But they are still an effective way to catch fish. The next method I wanna talk about is using a pinfish trap. And as the name implies, it is specifically made to catch pinfish and maybe the occasional grunt or two. But if you're looking to catch greenbacks or thread fins, this is not gonna work for you. You can get these traps for anywhere between 30 and like $60, depending on the size of the trap you get. And it's just a classic fish trap where it's got these small openings and you just put bait in the middle and the fish swim in and they can't find their way out. Pinfish traps are an extremely effective way to catch pinfish if you are using the right bait and you let them soak for long enough. My favorite bait to use for these pinfish traps is frozen sardines. I've actually learned a trick over the years where instead of just throwing your sardines into the trap itself, you make a kind of like a little holder for them. So all this is, is an old plastic bottle that I've cut a couple like slits in and holes in and I've super glued a weight to the bottom of it. And all you do is shove some sardines in here and then throw that in your trap. So what happens is the pinfish will smell the sardines in there and they'll swim in. But once they get in, they're not able to get to the actual sardines themselves. 
so the bait stays in there for longer and it'll just keep attracting more and more pinfish and it'll, it's a very easy way to load up your pinfish traps. The one major drawback with using a pinfish trap is how long you have to let them soak for. Typically what I'll do is I'll bait the trap and throw it in the water and let it soak for at least 24 hours before I check it. But if you're crunched for time or you really don't need that many pinfish, I'm sure that you could let it soak for a couple hours and you'll have enough bait. Again, when you're deploying your pinfish trap, you wanna look for areas that have either grass or areas near structures like a dock or a bridge or something like that. If you have a boat, you can deploy your pinfish trap and attach a rope and a buoy to it and you can put it pretty much anywhere you want. You just wanna make sure that you have plenty of rope for the highest of tide that you're gonna see and also that you're staying out of any heavy traffic areas like boat canals or really near like anyone else's docks, you just don't wanna do that. But if you're looking to just get a lot of pinfish and you have time to prepare and set up these traps beforehand, the pinfish trap is a very effective way to load up on bait. The third and probably the most popular or well-known way to catch bait is using a cast net. Cast nets can be an extremely effective way to catch a lot of bait quickly if you have the correct cast net for the given situation and you know how to throw it properly. When you're trying to figure out which cast net is best for a given situation, there are really three main factors you need to look for. The size of the net itself, the size of the mesh that's made up of the net, and the weight of the net. I recommend that if you're just starting out and you've never thrown a cast net before, you're just a beginner, to stick with a smaller net, anywhere between like six to eight feet, because it's gonna be a lot easier to throw and it's gonna be a lot lighter and not wear you out as much. As you start to get more practice and get more comfortable throwing the net, you can start moving up in size. And obviously you wanna do that because the bigger the net you have, the more area that it will cover and the more fish that you can catch per throw. As far as the size of the mesh that you want, it really depends on two things, and that's the size of the bait that you're going after and how quickly you want the cast net to sink. So when you use a smaller mesh size, like a 1 4th inch mesh that I have right here, it's gonna allow you to catch these smaller baits. However, if you throw in a smaller mesh size like this, it creates more drag in the water as it's trying to sink, and it will actually make it sink a little bit slower. It might allow the fish to swim out from underneath if you're in a little bit deeper water. You can try and correct this by adding a little bit more lead or a little more weight to your net, but it's just gonna make you get more tired and wear you out a little bit quicker the more you throw it. If you use a larger mesh size, maybe like a one half inch, then you risk gilling your bait. And that means that their head, they'll try and swim through the net and their heads will get stuck and their gills will get caught in the net and then they'll most often die. But if you use a bigger size mesh, then it'll be able to sink quicker with less weight. You really have to kind of judge what you want to do depending on your situation, on how deep you are and what size bait you're going after. Since 90% of the time when I'm throwing the cast net, I'm in like less than five feet of water, I can use a smaller mesh size and a relatively lighter net. My go-to net that I keep on my boat 24-7 is an eight foot black pearl cast net with one fourth inch mesh and it weighs roughly about 13 pounds. It throws super easily and it works perfectly at my go-to bait spots. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That would really mean a lot to me. If you guys have any questions or anything you'd like to add on this topic, please leave it as a comment down below. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys next time.